maybe I have. He just hasn't done it yet. Hi, everybody. Hi. Welcome to our group panel. Okay, first of all, I need you guys to write something down so you can come tomorrow. We have added a screening tomorrow at noon, did we say? What room? Events 2. Events 2. At noon tomorrow, we're going to be screening our brand new episode 9 of Star Trek Continues. And it features as our beautiful guest star, Miss Elizabeth Maxwell. So, you need to come. Um, any Snowbird fans would be, I recommend go. That's all I'll say. Yes. I, I recommend checking it out. Yes, if you're a crow winter shipper, you will love this episode. <laughs> so, I want to see as many of you there as possible, okay? Events 2 at noon tomorrow. Um, we're going to talk about anything you want to talk about. Obviously, Ruby is the obvious uh, thing that, that we've done together recently. But since it's kind of a group, pa a combined panel, if you have anything you want to talk about related to anything else that Elizabeth has done or I have done, uh, we're just going to play kind of off skate, you know, just open whatever anybody wants to chat about. Yeah, Does can we start? I, can, I love your story of how you got involved with Rooster Teeth. Do you want to oh, maybe like like start the show sure, off with talking about sure. how we? Yeah, you know, I told my my panel yesterday, and for those of you that weren't there. I was doing a convention in Australia, and a young lady came up to me, who I later found out was named Lindsay. And if you're Ruby fans, you know who that is. Um, and she, it was her husband, wasn't it? They were the... It might have been, no, it was husband. Was it? Wasn't fiance. I was going to say it might have been fiance, but I think they were married at that point. But they were at the convention, and I didn't know who they were or what they did. They came up to me actually in the lounge at the hotel. And they said, um, hey Vic, uh, you know, we're fans of your work, and uh, we do a thing, we'd love to show you some pictures. And they went, <laughs> and they pulled out this iPad, and they started showing me still images from Ruby. Now, a lot of fans show pictures and stills that they've drawn, all of varying degrees of quality, if you know what I mean. But these were really like, I was kind of like, wow, those are really good. And then they said, would you like to see some video? I was like, ooh, sure. And they showed me this clip of Ruby fighting. And I was like, wow, this is, this is legit. Like, this really looks great. So we all left Australia a week later. And then a couple of weeks after we got back to the States, I got an email from somebody who said, hey, we met you in Australia, and we showed you the project we were working on. Would you like to be in it? And I was like, sure. And come to find out that it was Ruby, Rooster Teeth, Lindsay and her husband, and, uh, and they sent me some still images of good old drunk old crow. And I sent them three or four options of kind of voices on the character, and they picked one, and off we went. And what's really neat about it is that for the first several seasons, I would just record my lines at my home in, Houston, in, uh, in Los Angeles. So there, none of the other amazing actors were there. I wasn't there with the director or the writers, so there wasn't really any input. And I ended up like sending them three versions of every line so that they could choose the one that they felt fit best for the scene. And, uh, and it wasn't until just recently that I've actually got to start, I got to start meeting Aaron and Kara and Lindsay and Barbara and Cohen and and all of these other people that are involved with Ruby. So it was weird how I got involved, but it's come to be like one of my favorite things. Um, as I said, I love how you like kind of, not, it's not exactly luck because your reputation preceded you, but you kind of, you lucked into like one of the most beloved characters on one of the most beloved shows on one of the most popular online sites ever. <laughs> I am so very lucky, <laughs> yes. Very lucky indeed. Um, I just love Crow. I love Uncle Crow. And uh, somebody asked me yesterday, have you ever recorded Crow when you're actually drunk? <laughs> and I said, no. <laughs> no. But no. Uh, so yeah, I just love him to death. And oh my gosh, the chippy stuff. 
Oh, so cute. I got to go to RTX for the first time this year. It was so neat. Yes, what an amazing convention. If you guys get the chance to go to RTX, check it out. You'll love it. How about you? How did you get involved with it? Well, I had, um, shame on me, never heard of Rooster Teeth, actually, um, because, you know, I'm a dinosaur, and I started out watching my anime on VHSs and didn't realize that you could, like, you know, watch amazing anime online. Um, and uh, I got really lucky because a lot of the animators uh, of Ruby are fans of Attack on Titan, and I'm a mirror in Attack on Titan. And I live in Austin, which is where Rooster Teeth is based, so they invited me to come and take a tour of the studio, and I was like, oh, sure, I don't know who you guys are, but cool. Like, I, I like animation studios, yeah. Um, so I went, I took the tour, I met Miles and Carrie and Cohen, um, none of the uh, girl, lady actors, uh, but, but all the dudes. And, uh, and at the very end, Gray was like, so... What would you think about like auditioning for us for a character? We have a character that like we think would you know be really good for you. And I was like, Yeah, man, sure if you're paying. Like, <laughs> like I'll, I'll audition for whatever you want. So <laughs> I know I'm, I was like so casual about it. Um, so I uh, you know a couple days later I get an email with all the audition material, and the first thing that piqued my interest was that character design that they released of Winter, you know where it shows her from like the front and the side. And I was just like, oh, yeah, this is actually really good, like, animation. Okay. All right, I can get down with this. And then my MO is that when I audition for projects, I usually try and watch, like, at least an episode of whatever I'm auditioning for so that I get a sense of the world of the show, you know, whether, you know, how much of a comedy or a drama it is. So I was actually in New York at the time staying with one of my best friends. And I was like, hey man, like, do you mind just like taking a little bit of time and like, you know, checking out, you know, like an episode or two of this with me? And he was like, yeah, 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 totally. So we sat down. The first thing that popped up was the was the red trailer, obviously. We get about 30 seconds in, and both of us are just like, we gotta clear our schedules. We gotta binge to attend. <laughs> um, and I, yeah, my best friend and I ended up like binge watching the first two seasons, like right then and there. <laughs> And uh, it was both a blessing and a curse because it introduced me to Ruby, which I am forever grateful for. But it was also like, I felt so much pressure when I was recording that audition, because I was like, I have to be on this show. I've got to be on this show. See, and I was spared that, because I had no idea what it was. I was like, yeah, I don't know if I'll be on it or not, it doesn't matter. So yeah, it's just, it's interesting. When you know something is really big, you know, there's that extra kind of, oh God, I really want to do this, um, that you're free of if you don't really know what it is, but yeah. And funny enough, um, I had never met Kara Everly before, but when I came in for my first recording session, Gray told me that they wanted me to audition for the role because they thought, you know, based on previous work I'd done, that I'd be really good for it. But then they said what clinched it was when they listened to my audition and met me and heard me speak, they said that I, I, Kara and I have like an eerily similar cadence to our voices. Like we don't sound the same in pitch, but we talk very similarly. And they were like, oh, there we go. There it is. This was meant to be. It's destiny. It's family. So, yeah. And, that, and season five, have you already recorded season five? Vic, I can't say that. You know I can't say that. Oh, sorry. I've already recorded season five. I don't know if I'm allowed to say it, but boom! All right, who's uploading this to YouTube right now? Uh, um, I am on Ruby TV now, though. Oh, yay! Oh my gosh, you lucky. TV's fun, fun, fun. I saw those for the first time at RTX. I had recorded the, the Chibi stuff, but I, had, I didn't even, I hadn't even seen a Ruby Chibi episode, so I didn't know what the characters looked like or how they were different from the, the series. And, and it, we were on stage, and they said, hey, you guys want to see, you know, the new uh, Ruby Chibi with Crow? And they hit it, and I was like... <laughs> <laughs> and that was so adorable. Have you seen it? Have most of you seen it? Yeah. It's the one where like he keeps flying up and hitting the window. 
Oh my gosh. Who's got a question? Yes, my darling. First, I actually wanted to tell you, thank you so much for yesterday. Oh, thank you. She gave me the most amazing gift yesterday. Thank you. I can't put it into words just how much it meant. Like, um, I'm going to get emotional. I, like, like, think shows like Full Metal or on Ruby, they, they helped save my life in a way, and I just, I just can't put it into words how much yesterday meant to Well, me. I love you. I love you, too. Thank you for your kindness. She gave me the sweetest shirt that she made yesterday. It had all kinds of cool little emblems and stuff on it. And it said something on the back, and I'm not going to tell you because it's very sweet and special. Um, I don't want it to sound arrogant, but I am very grateful. Thank you. What is your question, my darling? I wanted to ask if you would ever do a cover of Crow Song, because I'd love to hear it. Oh my gosh, you know what? I would if, if I wasn't so much worse of a singer than the guy that does it. Oh my gosh, Jeff? Jeff is amazing. I don't mean to imply that Jeff is not amazing, because he is, but have you got her, have you guys heard this guy sing? Yeah. He has like, I'm like, how does one person get that many talents? It's <laughs> not fair. I created a monster. Let it go, let it go. No, um, I, I would love to do that song. Um, I, I heard it. Somebody sent me a, even before yesterday, I remembered after yesterday's panel was over, somebody sent me a link. They said, did you, have you heard Crow's theme? And I'm like, what? <laughs> Crow's got a theme? And they sent it, and they sent me a link and I listened to it, I'm like, dang. And I think I even wrote, Cohen or somebody at the studio and said, who is this? Who does this music? Because it's really great music. All of the stuff, everything I've heard, and it's all the same guy and his daughter. Oh my gosh. And uh, I love it. It's called, what is it called? Bad, Bad, luck. Bad luck Charm. Yeah, and he sings really high, and I did too once. <laughs> Back in the 90s, I think. <laughs> but um, but I would love to do it. Maybe I'll drop it a few semitones and try and sing it sometime. I love it though. That was honestly one of the first things that hooked me on Ruby too. Was I mean the animation, the the, the fight animation that Monty did was uh, I mean beyond anything I was used to seeing. But the music was like, oh, where do I get that soundtrack? Fantastic. Thank you, sweetie. Thank you for asking. Sorry, was that for me or him or both of us? For Vic. So the question was, what do you, what are your thoughts on Ruby and? Well, what are your thoughts on your sister? Oh. My sister. So you have a sister. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, little Star Wars thing there. Did you get anybody get that? Yeah. Your feelings for her. <laughs> um. <laughs> Yeah, I gotta go Vader now. We do the rest of the panel as Vader. Um, uh, I have very strong feelings, which I will keep to myself. <laughs> I, so as not to spoil anything. But um, I do think it's interesting that a lot of people speculate that, that Ruby is actually Crow's daughter. It's interesting thought, isn't it? Who's got another question? <laughs> Sorry, I, I'm, I'm keeping, being very secretive. Pardon me? Oh no, I know, I know. There's, I think there's interesting stuff coming. Let me put it that way. I think there's stuff that'll, that'll, that will tickle that itch, if you know what I mean. And I was gonna tell you a lot of, I don't think that this is spoiling anything, and I'm, I don't know if this is honestly like super publicized knowledge or not, but, um, like, Monty wrote so far into the universe, like, there are still, like, so many more seasons to come that are, like, based directly off of, like, his vision and his writing, so... 
not that I don't love what the, you know, Miles and Carrie and everybody have added, but when I learned that, it made me really excited. Yes, sir. I, I, is, uh, is the episode with Winter out yet? And it's not Amanda, because I didn't think season three was out in Japan yet, is it? I would love to see, <gasps> have you heard it? Yeah. What do you think? They really nail you. Like the very they nail me? <laughs> <laughs> that sounds rather pornographic. You know what I heard? I heard that the Japanese guy that does Crow records it drunk all the time. <laughs> no, just kidding. Um, no, I'm dying to hear it now. Yeah, I, I honestly did not know that it, it that season three had been uh, released yet. Um, and I was wondering, so I can't exactly answer your question, but I was wondering, like, as an English anime dub actress, um, I often end up dubbing the same seiyus. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, because you know we have similar voices, and I'm like, I wonder if one of those actresses is going to dub me. Well, that would be very cool. I hope so. Oh my gosh. You know what? I just realized. I don't know if you guys have thought about this, and maybe it's nowhere near as cool to you as I'll bet it is to us. For 18 years, I've been dubbing anime, right? Over 300 different series of video games, and every single one of them, the Japanese recorded first, and then we got the show and we dubbed it in English. Ruby is the first time that the Americans dubbed it first, and then the Japanese follow up with a dub. That's really a thing, you know what I mean? That's, that's significant. I mean, how many times have we, have we done a show where somebody's like, okay, we want you to sound like this guy? Yeah. Or we want you to capture the essence that this Japanese guy did. And so you're doing your best to do that in a different language and make it your own and make it culturally um, uh, compliant or to fit in with the, the way we would do things or say things in this, in this culture, in this language. And suddenly to realize that those guys on the other side of the ocean are having to do that right now, right? They're getting these American dubs of Ruby and people are saying, hey, we want you to sound like winner. You know, or we want you to try to nail this English crow guy. Have a drink. It helps, I hear. That was pretty, sur it's pretty surreal. That is really a significant juxtaposition if you think about it. And thank you guys, because you're the reason why yes. that happened in that order. Absolutely. We applaud you, because that is the kind of thing that I have for years heard about companies wanting to do, but never did. So Rooster Teeth is really to be complimented for actually executing and achieving something like that, because it's pretty significant. An anime that is not made in Japan, and is so good that the Japanese want to dub it into Japanese. That's really amazing. Question, Olympics, your turn. Um, just a pro tip, if you ever come to a panel line, if you are dressed as a cosplay character of me or someone in my family, I will automatically call <laughs> you first, so. <laughs> um, so let's take a quick after that you did last year. We finished your game immediately, and here we are. Oh, oh hey. Um, so cool. What about working on Ruby are we most proud of? <laughs> She's most proud of her secret love for Crow. <laughs> the fantasies, you know. I don't, I don't know if this is exactly answering your question, but I can say the thing that I'm most like grateful for is I've told people before, like, working at Rooster Teeth is like getting paid to work with your friends. Like, they've become like family. It's amazing. Uh, I've gained what feels like an actual little sister. Like, Kara, Everly, and I have actually become very close. 
and um, hang out all the time now, and I give her like little private coaching coaching sessions on how to do effort sounds, uh, you know, from Ruby Eclipse, <laughs> and uh, you know, sometimes wake her up in the morning with a song. Um, I told the panel about uh, my panel about it yesterday, and. Um, Honestly, it's, it's kind of the fan reaction in some ways that makes me feel so proud to be involved with a project that is so resonant with such a huge group of people who I feel like we love it like as much, like you guys love Ruby as much as I love Ruby and like that's amazing. Um, so yeah, I guess that, that's kind of for me. I, I told the, the panel yesterday, I love playing characters that are not immediately recognize as my voice. Um, and, and Crow is not typically, that's not what I sound like, this is what I sound like. And so um, I've really enjoyed playing a character that has a different tone, and, um, and he's, the way he's written, just the, the, the dynamic of the character, I've really, really enjoyed. The people that, that are all working on it. And you know what, I have to tell you, along, along the lines of what Elizabeth said, you know, after Full Metal Alchemist, after eight or nine years went by after Full Metal, I started thinking, you know what? I very well may never be a part of anything as special as Full Metal again. I mean, that's a really amazing show. I mean, if you were to list your top five, you know, some of the top, maybe top five or top ten animes ever, Full Metal would probably be on it because just of the quality of the show, the story, and everything about it. So one of the sad realizations when you do a show like that is you may never do something like that again. You know, if you play Luke Skywalker in Star Wars, you know what I mean? Like anything you ever do after that will either be compared to it or you'll have to accept the fact that that was pretty much the biggest thing you, you could have ever done. And so I, I never expected, like I told you, I told you the, the genesis of my involvement with Ruby it was so random, and I knew nothing about the show, and I think this was probably before it even gained the fan base and had the, you know, the success that it did. So I am particularly gratified and, and honored that you guys have enjoyed it as much as you have, because I, I had no idea that it would become as, as big of a thing as, as it has, and I was just blessed enough to get involved with it when I did. So I'm, I'm really, really, that's one of the things about it, and one of the other things about it that's really special to me. My second proudest moment is getting through the line, silence you boo, without ruining it by laughing. <laughs> <laughs> that was a difficult one to get through. <laughs> boo. <laughs> okay, my turn to ask to answer. I typically choose people who play characters. That, no, I don't do that. <laughs> there you are. Yes. Oh, what are you? You look awesome. Either one. Who's got the question right there? We're, uh, we're sisters. I love it. <laughs> sisters with beards. I love it. Um, oh, you guys look great. Oh, there's actually guys. a Ruby shoot later today at like four. Would you mind stopping by and saying hi to everyone? Because I don't not all Ruby fans are here yet. So I sure, think where's that one? Um, it, they're meeting at four in front of the fitness center lot. It, by oh, is it Ruby like photo shoot or something? Yeah. I was wondering if you'd be able to, willing to stop by both of you, because I know other people who are big fans would... I will try. I mean, are you signing for this? Uh, you better show up, I'm going to clock you in the face if you don't. <laughs> what, what, did you what did you say? <laughs> Wait a minute, what did you he say? Said your sister, he said nothing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, in that case, I won't be there. <laughs> I will find you. Um, I'm not sure yet if my schedule will allow it. But yeah, I'm going to be signing right, right after this it. panel. I'm signing until probably like 5, right 4.30 or 5. But I would love to see everybody there. So please be a sweet sister and tell everybody I said hello. Will you do that? Okay. Give them my love or a punch in the face. <laughs> Whichever you think is appropriate. <laughs> Go ahead, your turn. My turn. Fuzzy paws. <laughs> Nice bear. I take it back. I choose somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. 
I love you, princess. You're my favorite commoner. Long live the poor. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Ed loves you too, just don't tell Winry. I am so texting Caitlin right now. Uh oh, God, it. <laughs> oh, no, no rants. Rants are yelling. And I try not to yell at conventions because then I show up for a recording session on Monday morning and I walk into the studio and go, Hey, everybody. And the engineer and the director is, what the hell? Yeah, so I, I try to be very careful because there's so much talking to do on the weekends. And uh, whenever people, if people ask me to do two things, I try to avoid them. Number one are short rants because they're typically Yelp. And guess what the other one is? Broly! Broly Kakarot yells, yeah. <laughs> but I love you, sweetheart. Thank you. Your turn. No, it's my Your turn. turn. Okay, let me try to pick somebody who has a question for you. <laughs> <laughs> Equivalent exchange. <laughs> Who's got a question for Elizabeth? Or both of us. Yes, sir. Hi, Corey. Hi. There you go. Boom. What do you guys do to recharge your creative batteries? As your actors, you have to work a lot. You have to be very creative. How do you recharge that? Yeah, he asked um, how we recharge our creative batteries. Um, well, I will say that just um, in, in the interest of full disclosure, that is actually something that like in my personal life I sometimes struggle with. I'm such a workaholic that it's really easy for me to be like, if it's not work, it's not worth my time. Um, and, and I do get into trouble sometimes because I'll realize that I feel just like completely drained, uh, you know, no matter how much sleep I get, yada yada. Um, but I genuinely like, playing video games is like genuinely like a creative like recharge for me. I grew up playing them. Um, my first video game I ever played was Alec Kid Miracle World on like the original Sega. And um, it's always, I don't know, it's like, that and reading fantasy and sci-fi books just kind of allow me to get outside of myself and be inspired by worlds that I wish I could live in. <laughs> um, uh, what else? Uh, re reading is another big thing. Um, also just, uh, sounds a little cliche, but like hanging out with my girlfriends. Um, I have really, really amazing friendships, and uh, I try and make enough time for them, and they make me really happy and inspire me. You sleep? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I get the odd three hours here and there. No. Um, this is a really interesting question, and I'll tell you why. I've spent many years writing music for a number of different things. One of the things that I have written a lot of music for were ad agencies. This is a job job. This is work work. This isn't like, I don't feel like writing a song today. No, you have to have a jingle written that's 60 seconds long with a sing in at 14 seconds and a sing out at, and it needs to be done by Tuesday. You know what I mean? Like there is no time to go, well, I'm just not really feeling the vibes and the muse is not with me today. My no, no, no. creativity does not go by a deadline. Exactly. And if you're cast in a show, <laughs> guess what? You gotta show up at 10 a.m. and you gotta be there. So one of the interesting things about actual, actually being hired for creative things is you have to be there, whether you're feeling it sometimes or not. Um, and I think that's what often takes it you know, from a kind of a, a, a semi-professional or an amateur level to a professional level. Now there are people that are counting on you. And not only are they counting on you, but they're paying money. They're paying money to rent the studio and to have the engineer there and you there. And it's got to happen. It's got to happen now from now to here because somebody's coming in right after you. 
So suddenly it's much more regimented and, and you, have to, you have to come through. Like, neither one of us would work for very long if we went into the studio again, or called the studio, God forbid, at 9.45 and said, you know what, guys, just not really feeling the, the creative vibes today. Can we reschedule the oh, session? Man. They'd be I like, yeah, we'll reschedule it for never, and we'll recast your role. I would pay to, like, <laughs> record you, like, try and pull that on oh my of gosh. animation and see, like, to Tyler and see what he says. What was the last role you ever played, Vic? That was it. <laughs> the one when I called and said that I really wasn't feeling it. So, um, and it's really weird because if you are fortunate enough to get cast a lot, which you would equate with success, guess what that means? You have less time to sit around and recharge or do what you want to do because now you, do, you have to do what you need to do, what you've been hired to do. And suddenly that fun thing takes on a whole different responsibility, right? Not a bad thing because it's part of success, but it is something you have to think about. You know, you, if you do something for, I've, I've met people, oh my gosh, can I tell you a story? I'm so sorry, I, I don't want to take, I don't want to be, um, you know, unequal in, in, in the time that we spend, but I have a very dear friend who, who does VFX work for Star Trek, for our show. He's amazing, he's a freaking genius. He builds the most amazing shots that you think are real and they're not, you with me? About a month ago, he got hired to work on a Nickelodeon show, and he was so excited. And over the last two weeks, every time I talk to him, he wants to kill himself. He's so frustrated and discouraged and sad because the people running this production apparently are morons. Right? You with me? They don't know what they want. They keep changing things. They're making them work extra hours. And he's hating the experience so much so that he said yesterday on the phone, I'm almost thinking of giving up VFX. He said they have stolen the joy out of it. I no longer enjoy what I love, what I feel like I have this gift at, because this is now the reality of it, and I just don't even want to do it anymore. Do you see where I'm going with this story? It's an interesting balance. When you do, you have this talent, and you want to do it, and it's creative, and it's so fun, and then you get hired to do it, and suddenly there are all of these other forces that come into the equation, and you have to understand that sometimes they may even be kind of discouraging to your creativity. That's a tough one. Um, and, and it's just part of being a professional in any field that's creative, you know? If you're a dancer and you get hired to play, in the, to, to be in the Nutcracker, and you're, you're, high, you're soaring high, right? You're thinking, this is my dream come true. And then the guy that's directing it is a jerk, and he doesn't let you be you, and he doesn't let you, you know what I mean? And he's, he's constraining your performance and whatever. Little by little, you start feeling, well, so much for that dream come true. This is really a lot, you know, a lot more difficult than maybe I thought or hoped it would be. That's kind of the reality, and I think it's important to share that with you guys, because a lot of you want to get into creative fields. So I think it's good for you to go into it with your eyes open realizing that the reality of being hired to write or paid to act or sing or dance or draw, there are other elements when it's a professional setting that are different than you just sitting in your room being creative when you want to be creative, you know? It's a tricky, tricky, tricky road. Also, if you want to be a professional voice actor, you have to be prepared to record through food poisoning when there's a deadline. Story. <laughs> Anybody who's seen Con Cole? I was throwing up during a lot of that. <laughs> Thank you. Absolutely. Oh, it's my turn. Uh, you. Oh, sorry, the lady with the red lips. Sorry. <laughs> Oh, yours are redder to me. 
Anyway. Um, you both worked at Denmark's Plantation, which is based in Texas, which we understand is going through a very difficult time right now. I've heard things with fundraisers. Do you know more about it and how the fans are Absolutely. Um, I actually recorded a video encouraging fans, me and some of the other voice actors that live in Texas, Monica, Real, mm -hmm. John Swayze, actually recorded videos encouraging people to give. Um, if you go to the Funimation website, I believe there are five or six uh, um, charities that you can donate to, and Funimation is matching the contribution. Yeah. So whatever you give, Funimation will, will match it, so basically they can double your donation. I, I made a donation yesterday, and I challenged fans to, I challenged 25 fans to give an amount that would equal what I had given to just kind of encourage people to do more. Um, I, I own a home in Houston, and thank God it was not touched, but I, and I live in LA now, but I, I lived in Houston for 20 years, and I love Houston and a lot of voice actors that you guys know and love live there and they were affected by it. So if you guys can give, you know, ten bucks, you know? You know, so so you don't you know, so so you don't go to Chipotle one day, you know? Um, it, it will it will mean a lot to the people down there that are in need and that'll be the best ten, twenty, thirty dollars you spend in a long time. Uh, thank you. Thank you for Asking. Since it's my turn, and you thought she called on you, I'll call on you. How about that? <laughs> um, it's kind of for both of you, but um, I wanted to know, is, is this something that you would like to story, but I wanted to know if you guys feel like how important you are to each other, to your guys' fans. Like, Aww. specifically, Crow, you helped me stop self-harming. And I've been free since, since March, and every day is a blessing. It's my birthday today. What? Birthday. <laughs> Today's your birthday? You should sing her happy birthday. We all have to sing her happy birthday. What's your name? What's your name? What's your name? Dolores. Dolores. Hold on, man, Lord. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We're going to sing... Dolores. All of you are going to sing, right? We're going to sing Happy Birthday to Dolores, and I will I'll do my best crow sing Happy Birthday. <laughs> Don't forget her name when you get to the important part, you know? Don't go, Happy Birthday, dear. <laughs> Dolores. Got it? All right, Dolores. It's that day. I'm going to have a big drink in your honor. Right after I sing this song. Ready, guys? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> birthday, dear Dolores. Dolores, Dolores. Horace. Happy birthday to you. And the answer to your question is a resounding yes. Um, you guys will never know, never know how much you have blessed my life, how much you guys have come to mean to me personally. Um, when I started this, back when Elizabeth was in college, <laughs> I'm the grandpa, I, I know. But when I started this, I never imagined in fact, anime was a little subculture, it was a little niche thing. And I, I, I did it for, I, I, I voiced Vega in Street Fighter 2 for, uh, for ADV Films. You did? Yeah. Oh my god! <laughs> You're like, That's my favorite character! College? I was in high school! Oh, he's awesome. The Matador? Yeah. Aww. 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 Even I have these moments. <laughs> and you know what, you guys? I've never had a clue that anything would ever come of it. I did not get into voice acting because I had any illusions about any kind of recognition or money, for that matter. Because anime voice actors don't get paid a lot of money. It's just, it's just a reality. 
and to see how it has grown. And more than that, to, to see how I've had the opportunity to be a part of things that have meant something to people. You guys, I wouldn't trade, I wouldn't trade all the money in the world for the chance to, for the chance to, to, to play a role that helped Dolores through a difficult time. Because you can't put a price tag on that. You know what I mean? There's no amount of money that would equate helping somebody get through a difficult time or helping them think about or see something differently than they used to. Because you know what? Because of that change, because of that moment in that person's life, the trajectory of their life may change. And the people they interact with, and maybe the person they marry, and if they get kids, the way they, the way they raise their children. Do you see how far your influence can go? Because of one specific moment when something that they heard or watched or saw made a difference to them. There is no dollar value to be placed on that. And when I came to realize that I had the chance to be a part of that, um, I was so humbled and so grateful. So yeah, I, I have come to understand um, the importance of it. And I, I am forever grateful. And this may be the time to tell you what that beautiful girl put on the back of her shirt she gave me, that she made for me. When I was a little boy, it was all about Star Trek, right? William Shatner was, Captain Kirk was like, I wanted to be him. Uh, my dad had just left, and there was this really cool, strong, brave leader of men, cared for his friends, and I'm like, wow, I wanna, I wanna be like that. And I was 12, right? And, that, and he meant everything to me when I was a little boy. And that sweet girl on the back of that shirt, she put a patch that says, you're our William Shep. And, if you would have told me even 15 years ago that I would ever have the privilege to be a part of something that would mean anything to anybody, I would have not believed you. But um, God has been very good to me. And you guys have been such a blessing and a gift in my life. So yes, that was the long answer. But the short answer is yes, I think I, I have a sense of how important what we do is to you. So thank you, Dolores. Thank you. I, I can't follow that up. What he said. <laughs> How many of you were in the panel yesterday, in my panel? I promised to show you a video, didn't I? Yeah. But I don't want to mess up the panel with Elizabeth, um, so I, I plan on showing you this video. But the good news is the video is online. Um, but Elizabeth hasn't seen it either. Mm -mm. I don't mind watching it. You want to take four minutes and watch it? You guys want to? a shirtless Vic and a shirtless Todd. <laughs> uh. Come down here so we can see the screen. Okay, so th for those of you who don't know what this is, um, Todd and I played characters in a show called Free. Oh, they know this show. And we play yeah. characters who are like, we're friends, but we're competitors, always. So Funimation contacted us shortly after the episode, or shortly after the, the casting, and they said, hey, uh, would you guys do something to promote this show? And I said, sure, and Todd said, sure. And so, <laughs> so, so they asked us if we would have a swimming race. Now you guys, let me just tell you in 10 seconds why this is so important. Because I, I played sports in my whole life and I'm very much of an athlete and a competitor. So I immediately was like, yes, let's do it. I'm gonna take him apart. And then I realized that Todd is 20 years younger than I am. <laughs> and he exercises every day and he's in great shape. And I thought, oh crap. <laughs> I could lose this on like just pure stamina, like just because he's so much younger than I am. And none of us had, had, neither of us had swam in a long time. I swam when I was younger, but not in a long time. 
But I thought, well, I'm committed, so we have to do it. So we got together one weekend, one, one weekday in Dallas with videographers from Funimation, and we shot what you're about to see. Roll it! Where's the video? There it is. Can we turn the lights off at all? They're both in excellent condition in real life. Uh, I'm gonna go with Todd though. I gotta go with Todd. People asked who they thought would win. Right. No, I can't, I can't answer that. <laughs> I'm gonna say Todd. I think he's younger than Vic, so that probably helps. I think Todd would win. I think Todd would win hands down. I think Vic Mignogna would win just because he's Vic Mignogna and he could like push Todd Hacker out of the way. Going up for grandpa. Uh, we started late. Uh, the the, uh, the panel before ran a little bit late, so we just want to take a couple of extra minutes. Um, we get to do that? Yeah, why not? I mean, you are Vic Mignogna. No, that doesn't count. <laughs> That'll get you shot or punched in the face. In some cases. <laughs> Who's got another question? Is it your turn? Oh, Go ahead, you pick one. I just made them watch that stupid video. You pick one. Wait, hold on. G? Yeah. Am I actually pronouncing that right? Yeah! Yay! Yay! She shoots, she scores. I have really good short term So they knew that I could like kind of sit in that lower voice comfortably. And I know that they were specifically, as you know, Winter is, is an older sister to Weiss, they were looking for something that definitely had like a more mature 
womanly sound, and she's you know in in the military, so they wanted that level of um, authority and uh, dare I say maybe arrogance. Um, but also for me specifically, because of her family background, it was really important that you also get a sense of her uh, pedigree and like the fact that she was raised, you know, like in. I mean, it wasn't nobility, but you know, kind of almost like a similar uh, environment. So, so in some ways, I was like, she's like the ballet opera version of like Modigo. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so like that's kind of where I, I I pulled from some some characters and some voices that I was already comfortable with, and then injected like a little bit more uh, gentility and kind of um, high bearing into it. And then, you know, also added in a little bit of more of that, like, I see, like, uh, As I said, I, I sent three or four different options to Rooster Teeth to see what they wanted him to sound like. Um, and they chose the one that, that you hear now. Um, I, will, I will tell you this, though. I, I wanted to just say, which I think you guys might find interesting. A lot of people will talk about, you know, like, changing your voice for different characters. When the main, really the main challenge and the main objective for us is to play the character honestly and, and authentically. Um, it's not always to change your voice. We both have played a lot of characters. You could probably take one line from five different characters and string it together and play and go, oh, that's the same person. Like they sound exactly the same. But if you watch those five shows, the characters and their personalities are very different. So the goal for us as voice actors is not always to say, oh, well, I did this voice for this guy, so I better come up with something new. No, it's not always to change your voice. That's not the goal. The goal is to play the character in a way that, you know, feels authentic and communicates the, the humor or the drama or whatever that the character is supposed to communicate. Acting is the most important thing, as opposed to the change in the voice. Thank you. Let's take one more quick question. I know we're, we've got to cut it out here. Is it a really good question? Okay. So, first of all, hi. Um, I just wanted to say that I really appreciate the show and Tamaki. And my friend here is a host club fan. So, I was wondering if you could do like a quote from the one I said was What is your name? What is it? Seth? Declan. Declan, cool. Declan, you're a hero to poor people. <laughs> now, let's drink some Calvin's coffee. Let's take one more quick question. Like, something that, that we can both answer. Who's got that one? Yes, with the pink hair. Um, my question is, what is one trait that you both share with Pro Winter, and what's one trait that you absolutely don't share with us? <laughs> 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 um, let's see. Um, so one trait that I do share with Winter is that um, it, it's kind of like the family relationship thing. Um, I'm very close with my family, but I, I, I told somebody earlier today, I always love my family, but I don't always like my family. Um, so that kind of like really strong sense of like loyalty, but also not always getting along. And as far as what we don't have in common, um, I have never in my life uh, called somebody a boob <laughs> in real life. And I, love, that's true, that's very true. Um, and I love bunk beds. I wanted a bunk bed so badly as a child, so badly. Um, the quality that we do not have in common at all is that I've never been drunk a day in my life. <laughs> so I, I've never, so definitely I don't have that. Which is funny because I, every time we talk about Crow, I make some drinking joke because that's his thing. And, you know, secretly I'm kind of chuckling because like, I don't even know what that's about. But, um, but I, you know, I think maybe the thing that we do have in common is that I am absolutely awesome. <laughs> with a scythe. I handle a weapon really well. No, I don't, actually. I've never held a scythe in my life. So there's something else we don't have in common. <laughs> you guys, thank you so much for coming. We'll look forward to seeing you.
Elizabeth's got autograph sessions. I've got autograph sessions. We are here to meet you, so come say hello. Thanks, guys. Thank you.